out of kind of left field, if you will, there's been a discovery by one of the teams that Fraxa has funded over the last few years that is changing the landscape even more. And when that happens, you realize how incredibly exciting and important this work is. We have learned so much more about how to do trials. Now that we've actually seen a successful trial, we go and look at how was that done? What were the measures that were successful? Those are the ones we use going forward. So will they be successful again? That's what we're looking at. And there are so many, um, there's so many potentials in this pipeline of treatment development. There's the drug from Tetra right now. There's the drug from Zynerba right now. There are others in the pipeline. We had Parker enrolled in the STX-209 trial and we were very excited. We'd heard good things about it. I did my research before um, putting him in and was very excited that he was they qualified and he could do it. Um, it was a double blind placebo. And so in the beginning, I mean, you, you don't know what you have, but in the beginning we didn't see anything. And I was kind of like, oh, that's our luck. It'll be my kid that it doesn't work on. But mm -hmm. then we went to the next eight weeks and within the first week, um, Parker, who was pretty much nonverbal at the time, just had a few words that were parents could understand, but if you but the speech pathologist said they didn't count as real words. Um, and then within that first week or two, um, he started talking. And his first sentence um, was, I love you, mom. And it was, I'm sorry, I love you, mom, because the glass broke. And um, it just changed everything. Uh, he went from super frustrated and screaming and pointing to try to communicate with us to being able to, you know, put words together and new words and it was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. It was a chance to really see more of what was going on inside of his mind and to see that frustration decrease, um, the behaviors got better and it changed our world. Um, we went to the movies, we went to the public pool and went swimming. I mean, we did things that we had never ever been able to do with Parker before. Like Holly, um... I had the a similar experience with Andy when he participated in one of the big trials. In his case, it was the trial of Novartis's drug, Mavoglurant. And, and we had a very similar experience with seeing glimpses of things in Andy that I wasn't sure existed. And that was the best thing of all. And that was the most important thing of all that came out of that trial and some of the other trials is that, you know, before that, we thought that the potential was there. We thought that adults with Fragile X could, could learn and grow and develop and become more capable, but we didn't know it really. So when you, as a, as a mother or a father, when you actually see it, when you actually see it, you're talking to your child and he answers you, or, you know, you play tennis and usually he, he, he would hold up the racket and the ball would go and then he'd swing. Well, he actually connected, you know, it was, it, it wasn't subtle. It was different. So it really made us see the potential that was in Andy. Then we were devastated when the trials failed. In the case of the trial Andy was in and that drug, um, it, it was a little bit of a different reason why there was a failure. Um, we are convinced that the drug worked, but only temporarily. And so it wasn't because we lost the drug that he lost some of the advances. It was because it stopped working. And that was very painful 
that was super painful. And it was very hard for me to go in and mark the checklists, you know, and, and admit that, yes, his behavior had regressed. His talking had regressed. And because I couldn't believe it, but it's, it's true and it happened. There are or were a lot of us who were in STX 209 and in other trials that saw tremendous progress and lost it that needed time to kind of heal from that. Um, there were a lot of us that were like, I can never do this again. I can never go through this and see these fantastic things and then lose it. I, I can't. And it's it wasn't so much that I feel at least for me that I didn't want to as much as I was scared. I was scared and I, I was scared. <laughs> um, and so it took me time. It took me time to, you know, work through those feelings um, and really stop and think, you know, if we wouldn't have participated in that trial, I would have never heard I love you. I wouldn't have seen the progress. We wouldn't have went to the movies. And so to know that that was, that was all possible and to know that the research was only getting better from there, then how could I not give him another chance? How could I not take on another trial and, you know, go from where it is? If I could know that I'd had a part in improving all those lives, um, that's pretty much a dream come true. I mean, that, that's enough. Um, especially because of those people I've met whose kids are really, really suffering a lot, you know, not every minute perhaps, but the, the children who, who hurt themselves, the children who, and Andy is one who are so anxious. They're really unhappy. We need to spare them that. You know, there's just, you just can't go about life as usual when people are feeling like that every minute of their lives. So um, that's, that's, you know, that's my goal. That's where my eyes on that ball. And um, I'm, I'm really frustrated that it's taken this time, but I, who had any clue how hard it was going to be to fix a brain disorder? Not me. You know, does it mean we don't don't continue? That would be crazy. That would be absolutely absurd. Have we made progress? Absolutely. With everything that you know, Praxa puts out with their research, I I dig right in. <laughs> like, you know, what what are they seeing early on? You know, what what are the results? And and you know, and are there any side effects? And um, and looking at what's coming through the pipeline and what's out there in trials right now, it's, it's amazing. It is, it is beyond amazing. I tell parents frequently when they ask, um, you know, if, if they get a call to do the trial and they're like, what do you think? I'm like, I would sell a kidney. I would sell a kidney to be in this trial right now. I, I'm so amazed with what's happening right now. And I am so just blown away by the results that people are seeing. And, you know, there is always a chance that, you know, things won't last forever. But if I don't try, I'm not going to know what it's capable of. And so to be able to see that potential that was there, how could I not give him that opportunity? You know, um, he felt it, he saw it as much as I did. And so to see the advancements that have been made in all these years, and to see the results that are coming out right now, I could not be more excited. I am I am on every list in two clinics. <laughs> like, please take him. You know, please, please put him in this trial. Um, I, I want it more than anything. I want him back on a trial. I want to, you know, see what comes of it. And I want to give him a chance for more independence and to improve his life too. And so I'm ready. I've never been more excited than what I'm seeing right now. The things that give me optimism, well, specific drugs for give me optimism specific discoveries like the one that's happened recently 
But then the fact that there are so many more dozens of teams, both academic and in industry, working, and each one of them has their approach. I love listening to them. And you wouldn't believe how inspired and dedicated they are. They may not have an Andrew or a Parker or an Andy at home, but they know what we need. They, they know what they're doing. They want help. And um, so it's, it's quite exciting. And the, the um, progress is accelerating and that's what we're trying to make happen. You know, if we have more money, we can do it by funding more teams. If we don't have more money, we can get smarter and smarter about which ones we fund, where are the bottlenecks, what are, what's really slowing us down. And obviously we're getting better at that. Technology is improving, medicine, discoveries, you know, everything is moving so much faster than it was 10 years ago or 20 years ago. So it's really an exciting road. Parents, parents, I would say um, if you previously participated and you saw good results, you know there's potential there. You know that that was just the smallest peek into what's going on and what the potential is. And with the advancements that have been made since that time, that potential is so much greater. I'm really privileged to be able to see these things as they happen. I'm really privileged to have been able to be with Andy when he spoke in a new way, when he went with me to a friend's party, when he played tennis. And yes, it did go away, but it's not gone. We, we see glimpses. So I just have a whole new appreciation for who he is. And of course I wouldn't stop, not for a second. I just felt like I could go through now and teach him, show him the world. You know, now we'll go, what would you like to do? And we'll go visit a new place, visit friends, travel. You know, if I dared get on a plane with him. Um, I think I, I, my idea was I would be able to be his teacher explore the world with him he's missed so much you know and to have his eyes open what kind of you know joy that would be it's hard to explain but it when I think about it I think it sounds like the best thing that could possibly be you know the best experience I could have but, and then of course the end of that fantasy is once he's learned enough is him saying, okay, mom, you know, I'm a young guy, you're getting older and um, I'm gonna go off with my friends now. <laughs> yeah, that would be the rest of the, the hope. I'm gonna well, be okay. 